Yao's the old school. Yi is new school. He's hip hop. He's 50 cent. He loves to dunk on you. Can shoot the ball from outside. Yi Jian Lian, born October 27, 1987. By the late 2000s, Yao Ming was already at the end of his road. He had only played seven seasons by 0910. Once he made the all-star team in every year, including as a rookie, averaging 13 points and 8 rebounds, and being voted in as a starter by the 1.6 billion people in China, and played 17 minutes and had just 2 points. For Yao Ming, there was a lot of pressure when he came to the NBA, but he was well equipped at his size and physical gifts, along with his personality to deal with the stardom of being China's first real superstar NBA player, the only in hindsight China has ever had in the NBA. With that said, you could understand the anticipation in 2007 when a 6'11 power forward that could post up, step out on the wing and create, and had a fluidness in his game Yao Ming never had and mirrored what the NBA superstar looked like at the time. Jian Lian even had the attractive Chinaman look that could have made him a much bigger star than Yao Ming ever was. Of course, the NBA was excited because to have a star player from a rich and plentiful country like China meant broader exposure and engagement, a loyal fan base that if they like you, they always overly support you, and much more money dumped into the economy and the league. Having a strong Chinese representative is beneficial for any business outside of China. But to have Jian Lian at 20 years old, who was hyped to be an even better, more marketable Yao Ming, had the league licking its chops and everyone tuned in to see Yi take over the NBA. He was taken 6th overall in the NBA draft, averaged 8 points and 5 rebounds as a rookie while shooting below 50% from the field as basically a 7-footer and 28% from 3 for everyone that said he could stretch an offense all the way out to the 3-point line. Make matters worse, he was traded less than a year later to his second NBA team, saying to the world that at least this team that saw him up close for a year didn't believe in all the hype and potential of China's next big thing. Yi would go on to only play five seasons in the league, and by just 24 years old, he was on his way back to China as a failed experiment that never even came close to the potential everyone said he had. Years Chinese fans would love to forget ever happened. Jian Lian's flop made many, including NBA franchises, much more careful who they crown the next this or next that or superstar potential this before they see how they translate to the NBA. Yi not only didn't translate, he was one of the biggest NBA busts of all time. And for these three reasons, let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Y'all ready to keep this thing moving? Yi Jian Lian was a 6'11 power forward center from Guangdong, China that was as hyped as any foreign amateur ever to enter the NBA. In fact, he may have been the most hyped Chinaman of all time. Sure, Yao Ming got his just due, but no one really knew what to expect with Ming as he was the first of his potential and expectations from the country. Him doing well put that much more pressure on Yi to follow the footsteps. Jian Lian was a star as an amateur, even invited and participated in the 2002 ABCD camp with all the high prospects in America expected to enter the draft. He signed his first pro contract at 15 years old with the Guangdong Tigers of the CBA and won Rookie of the Year even though he averaged just 7 points a game. America was just as fascinated. Time Magazine in 2003 calling him the next Yao Ming. He was a success in the CBA taking his team to the championship each year. By his final CBA season, Yi's hype was through the roof as many expected him to be a lottery pick, even possibly first overall. Stunt number one, overhyped. The first growth stunt that turned Yi Jian Lian into one of the biggest busts of all time was not even because of him. It was because around the time he was coming up, everyone involved in NBA basketball wanted him to be the next LeBron James or next Kobe Bryant, of course, next Yao. 
Next is always the coveted piece to riches, fame, and fortune. But E was never good enough, nor had the right internal intangibles to become what many expected. The fact he never even wanted to play basketball as a child, only convinced by outsiders that saw his size and fluid movements and had the bright idea to basically lab create a star player. Even leading up to the eventual draft he participated in in 2007, attempts to create the perfect environment for E to play in included he had to be drafted by a team that had a thriving Asian American community. He had to receive lots of playing time and it had to be a selection by one of the teams invited to E's pre-draft workout. Milwaukee was not invited. They decided to take him anyway with the sixth pick and immediately were met with displeasure from E and his team who would go on to hold out for months before signing his rookie contract. Milwaukee tried to convince him to play for them in that span, that he had the chance to create something new in the Midwestern city but to no immediate avail. E's representative even requested a trade from the team. They eventually came to terms and Gian Leon joined the Bucks and immediately placed in the starting lineup per stipulations of the handshake deal. He scored 9 points and 3 rebounds and fouled out his first NBA game, playing 25 minutes. In his second game, 2 points, 4 boards. Third game, the team decided to give him extended opportunity and in 33 minutes he had 16 points but took 15 shots. The season was not going as planned for the Chinese rookie and by mid-season it was clear he was much more overhyped than a good promising player even though he did better than Yao Ming's first games which gave the hype a little extra fuel. By the end of his rookie season Milwaukee had had enough and traded him to the New Jersey Nets where he didn't last long there either. Just two seasons and they too saw Jian Lian was a hyped prima donna masquerading as a new age superstar in Yao's shadow. Stunt number two, couldn't stay on the floor. Make matters worse, E was not just an overhyped prospect, but he was also very soft physically. Not the soft like refused to bang in the post, but soft as in his joints and bones just didn't allow him to stay on the floor. In his rookie season, in his second matchup between he and fellow Chinese superstar Yao Ming, Jian Lian injured his shoulder and had just 6 points in the loss. He missed 8 games and returned to the lineup only to be injured once again, this time to his knee and ruled out for the rest of the season April 2008. He played 66 games, the most he'd play in any NBA season. He was traded to the Nets after just one disappointing year and there he suffered another significant injury by yep, breaking his pinky finger, to which he was out the next 4-6 to six weeks. He played 61 games. Season 3, his second with New Jersey, he's playing his best basketball in significantly more minutes but still not looking like the player everyone thought he'd be by then. But for Yi's standards, 12 points a game and 7 rebounds weren't bad. But physically, he was just breaking down more and more. Knee injury, lacerated lip, sprained ankle, stressed collarbone, overworked ring finger, thumb, too much rain touching his body, not enough light in the gym leading to eye strain. This guy had all the excused absences in the game. He missed 30 more games in 09-10 as New Jersey too gave up on the potential star and traded him to the Washington Wizards, probably the worst most immature situation he could be in. Stunt number 3, not that talented or competitive. And finally, I don't think Qian Lian possessed any of the two to the level everyone had hoped. Sure he was talented, sure he liked basketball and the feeling of winning like everyone else does, right? But to what extent? To the point you wake up at 4.30 in the morning like Kobe Bryant, or you say 4.30 is just too early like Carmelo Anthony? I'm going to sleep, I'm about to see that practice. He wanted to see who was going to commit, I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't going at no that's, that's too early. Because one didn't have the start that suggested he would become a top 2 shooting guard ever and top 10 player. Instead, a rookie season much like Gian Lian, and the other had the start everyone expected and physical tools but didn't have the work ethic to see his potential through. 
I think from the beginning of having to convince him to join basketball as a youth, then being coddled throughout his journey, hurt his hunger and competitive spirit. As far as talent, he had the tools for sure. No, he wasn't fast or jumped out the gym, but he was a seven footer who could play like a small forward on the wing and shoot from deep. In that era, that was supposed to translate. The Wizards refused to re-sign him after one season and with the Mavericks he even spent time with their D-League affiliate before leaving the NBA to head back to China at just 24 years old. Of course, he went off in China, which talent-wise was right where he always belonged. All in all, Yi Jianlian was a bust, but it wasn't all his fault. Health played a huge factor, along with him not being allowed to develop further before thrusted into the NBA, where he just wasn't good enough. He should have been the next Yao Ming, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Chiboy JC stunted growth, and I'm out.